All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we had a little technical difficulty. I'm Officer Michael Hopsch. I'm your Public Information Officer at San Mateo Police Department. We're all here to discuss um, some uh, some issues that have been going on in your neighborhood. And so uh, we've got Chief Ed Barberini, Lieutenant Art Sanchez, who's your area lieutenant, and then Lieutenant Todd Mefford, who is the Investigations Bureau Lieutenant. Um, we brought uh, all three of them here together uh, for a, a presentation to you. And then we're going to go into a Q&A. Uh, it should last about two hours. Uh, and uh, we'll have a hard stop at eight o'clock. Uh, and then, um, we'll, you know, if there are additional questions or whatever, we'll be able to address them and maybe have a, another meeting in the future. So there are many ways that you can get involved uh, to help us to keep your neighborhood safe. Uh, please visit our website at samateopolice.org. Uh, there's a ton of information there. There you can view our uh, police accountability webpage to learn more about our policies and our training. Also there, there you can learn about our neighborhood watch program, uh, how to register your security cameras, learn how to sign up for our emergency alerts through Nick Soul and Nextdoor. And you can also follow us on our social media platforms. You can also email us at pdpio at cityofsanmateo.org. Uh, ask us any question you'd like, and we'll be able to get back to you uh, with an answer. So without further ado, I'd like to turn the mic over to Chief Ed Barberini. Thank you, Michael. Uh, good evening. My name is Ed Barberini. I do serve as your police chief here in San Mateo. I'm going to be brief because the nuts and bolts, I think, about what, uh, of what we want to hear and talk about today are going to come from the lieutenants. Um, I'm a firm believer in, in an open and transparent approach to serving the community um, and policing. And I, not only do I think it's healthy and, and a well-informed community is a safer community, but I also recognize that as a police department, uh, we, can't, we cannot ensure the safety and security of any neighborhood on our own and that we need that partnership with the community. So <clears throat> I think uh, these types of conversations are healthy. I look forward to them and I, I think they're very, very productive and I'm looking forward to the conversation tonight. Now I know um, there are some incidents in the incidents in the neighborhood that we're going to be talking about uh, this evening. Uh, one happened last Saturday near the Hillsdale Mall with the shooting, and I'm sure we're going to talk about that. But I also know that there's a lot more going on that we need to talk about. There's some concern. There's some other concerns uh, regarding the Hillsdale um, Garden Apartments and, and some other some other issues that I'm hoping we can address with some specificity and um, and provide a clear picture of what's not only what's going on but the steps that we're taking. Uh, to address them, what's working and what's not working. Um, so that's my that's my goal tonight. Um, I am uh, always, as a police department, there are, um, although we do like to be open, there are always uh, areas that we can't talk about. Um, and if we run into any of those, we'll, we'll, we'll tell you that tonight, but we'll also tell you why we can't talk about them, um, whether it's, it compromises an investigation or their privacy issues or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, my goal here is to be as open and uh, have an open discourse a productive conversation. Um, I'm going to turn it over to, to our area lieutenant, Art Sanchez. Um, I'd like to thank Art for the work that he's been doing. He's uh, He's been spending countless hours um, working on issues in the neighborhood. And I think uh, it'll be interesting to hear where we've gained some traction and made some headway and where those areas are that we, uh, we still have challenges to face. So thank you all for being here. The fact that we have so many people logged on is an incredibly encouraging sign and contributes to that, that whole <clears throat> the whole belief that, uh, you know, uh, an informed society and a collaboration between the police department and the community uh, promotes a safer environment. So thank you very much. I will be on the whole the whole time and I'll be available for questions afterwards. Um, if I don't speak with you, happy holidays and Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, but I look forward to our conversation tonight and I'm going to turn it over to Lieutenant Sanchez. Art. Thank you, Chief. Uh, those of you who don't know me, uh, I am Art Sanchez and I'm your Area 2 Lieutenant. I think I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, here on the Zoom meeting. Um, this is our second uh, meeting regarding the Hillsdale Garden Apartments. And those of you that uh, attended in October, this is gonna kinda, I'm gonna kinda rehash everything that we've done. It's the same strategy and we're pushing forward with it. But uh, uh, issues at the Hillsdale Garden Apartments are twofold. It, it's crime related and then there's quality of life issues. And I wanna go into the, uh, the complaints we received and what we saw uh, on the crime uh, on the crime side. And I got a lot of notes, so please excuse me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna refer to my notes as, as I go over this because I have a lot of information to put out. Uh, we had a, it started off with a handful of separate residents that moved into the complex and some were, were known gang members. 
Uh, upon them moving in, there was immediate gang presence and it was seen and it was felt uh, in and around the, uh, the complex to include the pool area, the gazebo area, and then certain carport areas. Now, what happened when I say there was an obvious gang presence, what I'm talking about is that there were gang members, uh, 10, 15, 20 strong, huddled together, drinking um, adult beverages and smoking marijuana. Uh, we saw an uptick in property crimes, assaults, uh, calls for service, disturbances, drinking in public and littering. So what is, what is San Mateo Police Department doing about it? We increased our passing checks around the complex uh, for the officers that are working in the area. And then the officers working other, uh, from other areas came in, driving around the complex, uh, looking for suspicious activity. Uh, we actually parked our cars and conducted walkthroughs inside the, the, the complex. Officers would group up in two and three, and they go walking through the, uh, through the, through the complex. Uh, we signed officers on an overtime basis to saturate that area along with some of our, some of our other uh, gang hotspots uh, here in San Mateo. Our crime reduction unit or our crew unit uh, assisted greatly by identifying the subjects involved in the gang activity and they made gang related arrests and other proactive arrests. So after a gang related shooting in the complex, I started to work with the Hillsdale Garden Apartments Management. Uh, the management was able to evict three gang related subjects and that really helped uh, displacing that obvious gang presence. There's still an additional two uh, evictions that are currently pending uh, that the management is working on. The San Mateo Police Department, we continue high profile patrols in the area. Our SMPD officers and circle employees are working to address the parking issues and, issu and are issuing numerous citations for various parking violations. And I'm talking about the double parking, the uh, red zone violations, the handicap violations, uh, you name it. Um, gonna talk a little bit about the quality of life issues now. Uh, and I, being the area lieutenant, I received numerous, numerous emails and phone calls regarding suspicious persons and suspicious vehicles in the area, drinking and littering in public, illegal dumping in the creek, overflowing of trash at, in the trash bin areas and into the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, infestation of rodents and rats coming from the creek and overflowing and coming from the overflowing trash areas. Uh, fence repair issues with neighbors that share a common fence with the complex. And then again, the parking issues of, of all types. Uh, what is uh, the Hillsdale Garden Apartments doing about it? Uh, they got a new property manager who's experienced in, in, with dealing with problem complexes. And uh, he took over this month. Um, they're taking a closer look at potential rent renters and are doing backgrounds to screen out potential problem applicants. Uh, they are continued uh, and committed to working with me and San Mateo Police Department to address the issues. Uh, when it comes to the um, overflowing of, of the trash, they've ordered larger dumpsters and they're paying for additional garbage pickups for the trash issue uh, and to prevent the dumping into the creek. Their pest control company uh, initially placed uh, rodent traps all around the property and, and on the creek line. Uh, when we talked back in October, they placed an additional 30 rat traps. Uh, I spoke with management last week and there'll be an additional 20, uh, again, placed around the creek line and around the property, trying to keep the, the rodents um, within their complex and not, not going out into the neighborhood. Uh, I guess some of the neighbors have requested a trash can to be placed on the corner of Edison and Hillsdale. So that is on order and it should be placed there by next week. Uh, I was told by management that all the, fit, all the fence issues are now fixed on Louise Lane. If there's anyone who still has a fence issue on Louise Lane at the very end uh, with the comments or questions, let me know and I can speak to them about it. Uh, they're looking into implementing a parking program to discourage their tenants from parking inoperable vehicles in the carport areas. If you go through the carport areas, there's a good number of inoperable vehicles taking up the carport spaces, and then it forces the vehicles that, that are running out into the street. So they're gonna try to get rid of the inoperable vehicles, which will allow their tenants to park in those spaces and reduce some of the parking issue on the street. Uh, they started a unit to unit inspections to hold the leaseholders accountable for subleasing and overcrowding. Uh, they did tell me though, they, they started the process. There is 
697 units, uh, they must provide a 24 hour notice to inspect. So that does provide tenants some time to fix some of the issues, but they're pushing forward with it. Um, in closing, um, this came up at, at our last meeting in, uh, in October by, by one of the uh, community members. And I, I, just wanna, I just wanna enforce this, that the, the, the tenants there at the Hillsdale Garden Apartments are good citizens. Uh, they're members of our community. There's a very small percentage of tenants that require our attention. So we are taking the care to make those precision police contacts and especially with the evictions. Um, that's, that's all I have. I did have a community member who reached out to me a couple of days ago via email and uh, they wanted me to uh, run stats for like the past two years and break it down into, I believe it was three months or six months and compare it and compare it all the way from two years ago to now. Uh, and I didn't think that was a fair, a fair apples to apples com uh, comparison because myself and the San Mateo Police Department have been working with the uh, Hillsdale Garden uh, since October. So what I did do is I ran some numbers and I did it, uh, I did it this morning. So I got some raw data for you. Um, I can't show you the data because it has the, uh, the incident, the type of incident was date, time, and then the location and the location. And also if it's a business, it, it's attached to it, or if it's a residence, and if we know who lives there, that's attached to it. So I can't show you that because of uh, uh, privacy type issues, but I could share the numbers with you. So what I did do is I ran from August 1st to uh, October 15th, and then October 15th to present. So I took that five month uh, period and broke it into two and a half months. And again, we started working with the Hillsdale Garden Apartments in October. So we have a call, a, a call code of, of, of 1051s, and those are intoxicated subjects or subjects who are drinking. And this is in public because it's not against the law to drink or be intoxicated inside your own residence. So from August to October, we had 15 calls for service in the Hillsdale Garden Apartments for that. Now from October to today, we've had six. So that's cut down more than in half. Uh, for suspicious persons, we had 20 calls for service from August to October. From then to now, we have 12. So almost cut 50%. Suspicious vehicles, there was 12, 12 calls for service for that. Um, from October to, to today, we've had zero. Now here's a big one, 415s. 415 is, is what we call a disturbance. So it could, be, it could be a lot of different things. It could be people just being loud. It could be a, a couple arguing. Uh, it could be anything that's gonna make a loud, uh, disruptive, um, disturbing the peace and we get the call. Again, from August, to October, there are 70 calls for service to the San Mateo Police Department at the Hillsdale Garden Apartments. From October till today, there's been 31. So again, cut in half. Uh, 415 music. So these are the disturbances that are only music complaints. People are playing music too loud. There was 28 from August to uh, October. Uh, there's only been four from October till today. A uh, little bit on the property crime side. Auto burglaries, there was three from uh, August to October, and there's been three since October till now. Um, residential burglaries, there was five. And then from October till today, there's only been one. Um, let's go into auto, auto vandalisms. There was two from August to October. There's been zero uh, from October till today. Residential uh, vandalisms, there was three. And from October to today, there's been zero. Uh, stolen vehicles, there was two. And to presence, there, there was one. And then thefts from August to October, there were nine. From October till today, there, there's been one. And those thefts are usually, uh, by looking into them, they were thefts from vehicles. So I mean, uh, the, the owners did not, uh, did not lock the, the doors to their vehicles. So people just went in and helped themselves. Uh, but those were the stats that I ran. Uh, again, it's, it's raw data. I could dig into them a little bit more um, if needed. Uh, but that's all I have. I'm sure there's questions for me, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce uh, Lieutenant Todd, Todd Medford. He is Lieutenant of our Investigations Bureau, and he's going to talk a little bit about what happened this Saturday.
Hi there. Hey, my name is Todd Mefford, um, and I'm a lieutenant here. I'm in charge of the investigations unit. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit about uh, the homicide that we had over uh, at Wells Fargo. Um, I'm going to give you as much information as I can. I can, uh, you know, answer any questions. But what I want you to realize is the chief mentioned it earlier, is that we really can't um, divulge all the information that we have because we don't want to compromise the investigation. Uh, it's ongoing. We are making progress. Um, but a little bit about uh, how this call came out last Saturday at 930 in the morning, uh, we received uh, 911 calls of shots fired um, at the Wells Fargo Bank parking lot. We responded over there and we found the victim um, laying on the ground, uh, suffering gunshot wounds, and uh, he was dead. Um, the victim uh, is from San Jose. He's only been living up in the Hillsdale Garden Apartments for about four months. Um, he has strong ties to San Jose. He's an aspiring uh, rap artist um, in the Polynesian community. Um, his uh, nickname is Cuddy Banks. He has videos online um, that you can see. Um, but he was our victim and um, just transplanted here from uh, out of the area. Um, it's unfortunate that uh, this happened, you know, especially in San Mateo. Um, but what I, what I want you to know is uh, we know that this was not just a random act. He was targeted for some reason. Um, we are developing information on what the motive may be. Um, we have a couple theories. Um, but we are uh, we're actively working. We have not been off um, since 9.30 on Saturday. Uh, we've been here the entire time and we're continuing to be here. Hope we're off for Christmas. <laughs> um, and see, that morning when he was shot, um, he left the apartment and he walked across the street to um, Wells Fargo parking lot. He parks his car over there for, I guess, a parking issue. And uh, as he was going to his car, he was approached by our suspect and was shot. Um, the suspect is described as a male, um, tall and slender, wearing a dark hoodie and um, a dark mask, you know, uh, COVID type mask. Um, and, you know, we're taking this where the evidence leads us. Um, I, I wanna assure you that, you know, um, so it was a specific reason and target uh, that this happened. And it's not indicative of that environment over there. You know, in, ge in general, San Mateo is an extremely safe place. Um, these, these latest uh, uh, violent crime trends are not um, just specific to San Mateo or happening all across the United States. Uh, a lot of it has to do with some frustration because of COVID. You know, that's just a reality. Um, so, um, let's see. Just in addition, I have a note here that we, we're using additional resources. We're not, it's just not San Mateo Police Department that is uh, investigating this. We have outside agencies that are helping us get information. Um, we're going to different places. Um, and then our department has reassigned additional officers up to investigations to help us uh, look at video, go collect video, um, do interviews, and just uh, a lot of follow-up work. Um, one thing also, I you know, video is extremely important to us. So if you have some, um, I would really encourage you to uh, register online. The only thing that that does is uh, say that, you know, Todd Mefford at this address, a video camera. We don't have any access to it um, unless you, uh, unless we physically go over there and you provide that to us. Um, so it's not like we, we have access into your video system. Um, it's just letting us know that we, uh, that you have the camera. Um, so with that, that's kind of what I can go into at this point. Um, um, we'll ask, answer any questions as we go. Um, but as you, uh, as we go through, if you have any questions I can answer, I'd be happy to. Great, thank you, Lieutenant, uh, both Lieutenants and uh, Chief Barberini. Uh, we'd like to uh, 
save this time for some question and answer. So we're keeping an eye on the, on the participant section of Zoom. If you'd like, just please raise your hand and I will call on you and ask you to unmute one at a time and we'll work our way down the list. All right, Mr. Uh, Doug Levitt, I'm gonna ask you to mute and uh, go ahead with your question after you unmute. Uh, hi, officers. Um, I, we live about a block and a half, two blocks from the Hillsdale uh, Garden Apartments, and we've noticed um, significant parking issues in our area. And I, I got a se my, my sense is, is that one of the problems is, is that the, the operators of this thing are just letting anyone move in there. And it's not, to, I'm not talking about the type of person, I'm talking about the quantity is, is that the, 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 uh, it's like a, it's become, and again, I'm not talking about the, the quality of the people, I'm talking about the quantity, it's become just overcrowded. And it's, a, of course, they're going to have issues with the amount of overcrowding they have. And someone in the city needs to do something ab ab about that. I, I think it's become a real problem. Yeah, I, I, can, an I, I can answer to, to some of that. Um, Doug, thanks for the question. So, um, in speaking with Hillsdale Garden um, management and also uh, Excess, uh, uh, they're aware of the overcrowding. Um, they're not allowing it. What happens a lot of times, especially now because COVID and the shutdowns and people losing their jobs, is there a family will rent out a one, two, three bedroom apartment and then they sublet uh, to others and they allow other family members in and or friends in and. Uh, and that's what they do. And, and, and I, I, you know, I feel you're on the, you're, you're on the right path there. It, the, the overcrowding is causing a lot of these issues with parking and trash and et cetera. Uh, but Hillsdale Garden Apartment is committed to, uh, to uh, straightening that, that, that issue out. Uh, they're starting unit to unit uh, inspections and they're going off the lease of, uh, of who's supposed to live there versus who's actually there. So th they are trying to tackle, tackle that. Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting because in the, especially in this time of COVID, um, if your place is overcrowded and everyone's sheltering in place, it's going to, you know, families have issues, they start getting arguments, people go outside, and then it just becomes worse. And you guys see this all the time. It's just you, you start seeing people drinking outside um, because, uh, you, you know, they're out of work. I mean, I mean, it's a sad situation with this COVID thing, but... Um, I, I do think someone needs to do something. And I, I actually think that the Hillsdale Garden Apartment uh, operators um, are not doing enough. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, uh, that's what I believe. And I, and, and, and I think they should start paying uh, money to have uh, police um, monitoring that area um, because obviously they make a ton of money on that place. Anyway, thank you so much for your answer. Thank you, Mr. Levitt. Uh, Susan Rowinski. Susan. All right, uh, Kristen. Oh, sorry, oh, here I am, I'm sorry. Oh, there you are. I, yeah, Great. sorry about that. Um, I have been living next to the Hillsdale Garden Apartments for 22 years. And ever since Essex took over in 2007, it has just gotten worse and worse. And Essex is a large publicly traded REIT. Um, their market cap is roughly 25 to $30 billion. So my question is twofold. My understanding is Bohannon uh, has leased out the land um, and Essex is the operator of the Hillsdale Garden Apartments. But, but Bohannon owns that land. And I would like to understand what responsibility Bohannon and or Essex have um, in this situation. Um, there is the property manager and that's who, you've, that's who you are dealing with, but I think it needs to go higher up the higher, it needs to go higher into the hierarchy um, with the owners of the land uh, who leased to Essex. And I would like to understand what their legal responsibility is for the havoc that they have caused, um, not only to the residents who live at the garden apartments, but everyone who is the neighborhoods that are surrounded, including the schools and hospitals. I, I guess I can jump in. And, and, and unfortunately, I probably don't have a satisfactory answer to your question uh, as far as 
um, the their level of culpability or responsibility. Um, definitely, we, we've definitely had conversations about speaking with um, folks above the property management level, and those uh, those efforts are in the works. A um, couple of the questions that you asked, uh, Mr. Winsky, are legal questions that that I'm pro I'm not qualified to answer, but we we can't consult with our city attorney to determine what. Uh, what type of culpability or responsibility those parties have. Uh, but I, I, I will tell you that we uh, we are making efforts to to sit down at the table with, with those at a higher level to discuss some of the overarching problems. Unfortunately, it's the property management group and our area lieutenant that have to deal with the day-to-day -day, um, issues and they are kind of the boots on the ground. So they, they're the most knowledgeable, but as you as you mentioned, uh, there are other folks that are that are part of this and uh, and we are making efforts to sit down with them. I wish I had more. I wish I had a, a better answer for you, but that's it right now. Thank you for the question, Kristen. Uh, I see you next. Yeah, hi. Uh, similar to Susan, we've lived on Louise Lane with a fence that borders um, the Hillsdale Garden Apartments for 20 years. And uh, similarly with Essex management, and especially the last two to four years, we've seen a rapid decline um, to the point where I have tried to rope in some city council members um, with the parking situation and the trash. So the parking first off, I called the Hillsdale Garden Apartments and investigated just playing like I was a potential renter. They don't even have a stall, one stall for each apartment complex. I think they're like 38 short. And we know that those apartments are multi-unit and have at least two drivers, if not more, on a one bedroom, let alone to your earlier point, the subletting. So I think there is an organic issue that as rents have gotten higher has just exacerbated the overflow within um, the surrounding area. And it's really taking a, a hit on, I feel like our property values and just our safety. Um, I do see a more aggressive person parking than I have in the past. So the two gang uh, violent acts are not as surprising to me, unfortunately. And then the trash issue, um, a dumpster on Louise just caught fire within the last few weeks, arson, burnt down a neighbor's fence. I was fortunate enough after two years of just persisting with Norma and pictures of going over there and taking pictures of the overflowing trash, um, which showing it to the city, they were like, this is an ordinance issue. Like uh, they moved the, the trash to the front of the, um, so anyone who's got a dumpster on the Wii's, uh, they did move the dumpster to the front of the building, which I very much appreciated. But I was getting trash in my backyard from hefty bags to McFlurry cups two to three times a week. And, and then when they did move the dumpster, I still got people retaliatory throwing stuff in my backyard. Like the tenant only dumpster sign came flying into my backyard twice. So there is an aggressiveness. I called the police, but I was told it wasn't, you know, an issue that they could really handle and that I should look at potentially raising my fence line and getting an, you know, an acceptance to that. But I just wanted to share, I agree it needs to move up higher in Essex um, I do think they have an organic issue with the parking that just the number of stalls. It's a Bohannon property. Ultimately, I think Bohannon as the mall should do more to allow them to park in there. And I know probably it's a liability issue, but maybe the city attorney could revert liability to the city from, you know, X, you know, five at night till or, you know, so that we can have some additional um parking uh, support because it's just very aggressive in the evenings. I have to say Circo in on Louise is doing a significantly better job than the previous just 10 people. So I have to say that's a positive, but I just had to share my experience. This is, it's such a problem. I think it degrades the value of our house and we own a house on Louise and my parents own a house on Louise. Um, so there's two of us that own on Louise. We loved it so much. That's why we bought there. So I, I just have seen the decline and that's, I just wanted to share my experience. I don't know that there's answers, but I just wanted to say this has gotten very, very bad to the point where now on Louise, we have our own subgroup where we talk about these issues and share anything that happens because of the experiences we're having. Hey, Kristen. 
as uh, yeah. as your area lieutenant, um, I didn't know this was going on with the trash in, in your particular property. Um, I'm your area lieutenant that deals with me. Um, so as your area lieutenant, if something happens and, and it's, it's happening right now, it just happened or it's about to happen, that's a call either to our 911 or our non-emergency line to get an officer out there right then and there. But when it's an okay. ongoing issue like that, contact me. Do you have my contact info? I think at the end um, of it. Uh, yeah, Angie officer shared Hoffman. it. Thank you. Yeah, but I so, do have to say, I, I did have to escalate it. I saw two different property managers through getting the, the dumpster moved to the front of their building. Uh, but it was the regional office who ultimately supported it, who Norma reported to, because they said, I remember you calling two years ago about this. And I'm like, yeah, it hasn't changed. So I apologize. I should have roped you in. I didn't honestly know that you existed as far as like owning oh. the territory until Angie told me. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. And if, and if you, if everyone on Louise Lane wants me to meet with them, uh, I'm available to do that also. So just let me know. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Kristen, for sharing your experience. Uh, Joyce, I, I see you're next. You can unmute. Yeah, hi, you can hear me? Yes. Okay, good. I wanted to know the statistics of uh, the robberies and, and break-ins. Does What area does that uh, cover? Is that only the gardens or does that include the Beresford area? Yeah, no, for, for this meeting, uh, I went ahead and I drilled down into the Hillsdale Garden apartment proper. The only, the only thing with that though, is that the Hillsdale Garden, because it's so large and the way we, the, we gather our data, we do it by areas. So there was, I believe three or four areas that, that the complex reaches out to. So there is some fringe around mm. it. Um, but what I, what I did do is, is if, I got rid of the hospital because the hospital has, has a lot of calls and a lot of assaults and et cetera. And then I try to get rid of the, uh, the mall also because the mall has a bunch of frauds and arrests and stuff that happen within the mall. But I really try mm -hmm. to drill in um, to, the, to the complex proper. Yeah, I do think it spilled over to Sunset Monterey. Um, there was a smash and grab on uh, 26th Avenue oh, several months ago. So I think it is spilling over. Be way beyond just you know the immediate mall. So just wanted to check in with you. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Nicole. Nicole, are you still near your computer? I'm done. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Kathy. Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we'll get Nicole uh, right after you. Okay. I'd like to know um, with the COVID issue of non evictions and that sort of thing, is that applicable in this situation? Uh, for for you know, if, if, you're, if you're behind on, on your rent, they can't evict. But if it's some sort of uh, pub, public safety hazard, like with the gang members and, and stuff like that, they can't evict. Okay. Thank you. Or, or, or I believe if, if it's a breach of their lease, but if it's just, if it's just behind on the rent, they, they cannot. Okay, thank, thank you. you for the question. Nicole, uh, if you don't mind just unmuting, please. I was wondering what the homicide rate is for um, San Mateo this past year. Uh, we had four this last year. Um, it is higher than we usually have. Um, we average maybe one or two a year. Uh, there are years where we do not have any. Um, today, or you know, as of Saturday, we've had four. Thank you, Nicole. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Oh, uh, Carol, I think I see you waving your hand. Uh, if you can just unmute yourself. Yeah. Hey, first, first off, thank you so much for doing this. Um, really a shout out to San Mateo Police Department. Thank you for being here tonight. Really appreciated by all of us. Um, I guess my question goes back to Hillsdale Garden Apartments. I live on Louise Lane and I have for 22 years also. And I have to agree with um, both Susan and Kristen. Since they sold it, it's been a whole different world. Everything has changed. 
So is there any way to force them to put in at least um, like security cameras? We'll have ring, we'll have all those, they have nothing. Or how about them paying for security instead of you guys doing that all the time? Is there any way to get them or encourage them or somehow make them to come up with a plan to do this? So I'm, that's my question for tonight. <laughs> Yeah, Carol, I, I've been in discussions with them. I mean, when I when I took a walk around around the property, you know, the first thing I saw, they do have cameras. They got a camera, I believe, at the pool area. It may be at the gazebo area, but I need cameras all throughout the property. I mean, that would be great for the for for them as a deterrent and for us in case something happens, we have some evidence to go back and and, and take a look at and try to try to catch uh, people who are responsible for crime, right? Um, but the, there's there's a monetary uh, issue going on and they have to run that up their flagpole, their chain of command for the money to do that. They do have a security company, but it's one of those roving companies that go to several properties throughout the Bay Area and the Hillsdale Garden uh, Apartments is just one. Uh, I've requested that too. I said, can you guys get, you know, security officers there posted walking around if not in the evenings, at least on the weekends. And again, that's something they have to they have to run up, up the flagpole. Is there any recommendation you can make to us as a neighborhood group to pressure them to actually put some money where their mouth is to do just these basic precautions like that? You, you can give them a call and, okay. and voice, voice your concerns, emails. Okay, we'll continue to do that. Thank you. And again, thank you to San Mateo Police Department. You guys are awesome. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And just in response to your last inquiry, this this is this this meeting's recorded, and maybe we can make sure that they uh, they get a copy of this and they and they hear your concerns. So um, we will be happy to do that as well. So great, but we'll see how successful it is, but we'll we'll try. Thank you. That's right. We will be posting this to the same next door post that we sent out, uh, and that's that was a geofenced post, so it just went to uh, the surrounding area uh, of Hillsdale. So. Um, Rick Greenley, I saw your hand raised first. If you can please unmute. And Jeff, uh, I see you uh, waving. We'll uh, we'll get you next. Great. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I'm unmuted. You are unmuted. If you can just uh, speak a little closer to the microphone. Perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing more and more about property crimes in the area, and and my concern is is twofold. Number one, property crimes aren't a high priority right now as far as you know, bail is not a thing that is allowed anymore. Plus, it's catch and release with COVID. So the concern is, what happens when these people get arrested for property crimes, they immediately turn back into the community? Is there any way that you folks can rouse them and keep them out of here? And then the second point is, how is the morale of San Mateo Police Department with this catch and release for criminals? Who would like to take that uh, question? I, I guess I guess I can jump in real quick. Yeah. The, okay. So COVID has changed the way has changed police work significantly, and and I, I'll let Lieutenant Sanchez jump in because he um, he actually works for a living, and, and and I sit behind a desk a lot. But um, you're correct. A lot of the folks that would have otherwise um, been booked into jail are now issued citations or promises to appear. Um, but it, but uh, even before COVID, um, the criminal justice system is evolving a little bit, and um, property crimes that um, that that per people used to be arrested for and, and taken to jail um, have have been kind of reduced from f felonies to misdemeanors. Uh, the dollar amount or the, the threshold for what a, a felony is has risen considerably. Um, so those are all challenges. Um, COVID has changed it dramatically. Um, you know, we, uh, we 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 had good proactive police work last night. We um, we identified in two separate instances people driving stolen cars, and typically those folks would go to jail, but but in essence, it's a property crime now. And with COVID, uh, they were they were issued citations and and uh, and given a court date. So um, it uh, it's a challenge um, as far as morale. Um, I'm the chief, so I always like to think that morale is great and they love the chief. But uh, I know that that's not true. Um, but uh, you know, I, I still I I try to go to our patrol briefings. I try to interact with uh, with our officers on a daily basis. I see motivated individuals who in, enjoy doing police work and are anxious about. Um, about doing the right thing, regardless of um, of what uh, what the criminal justice system uh, or what that process looks like. You know, we understand our role. Our role is to go out there and, and um, you know enforce the laws, uh, not necessarily um, um, 
uh, adjudicate um, all of these instances. Um, but our, our primary focus is keeping people safe, pr protecting life first, um, and then property after that. And we'll continue to do that. Um, I, I would be, I'd be lying if we all kind of shake our heads sometimes at, at, um, at some of the changes, um, especially, you know, we're probably biased in law enforcement because we see the, we see the impact, we deal with the victims. Um, and when somebody's a victim of a crime, um, you know, sometimes it's just a statistic on a piece of paper or it's just a report. And the fact that somebody, um, you know, suffered a, a tremendous loss, even if it is property, uh, that impact is, is, is rarely realized um, beyond the police officer that has to interact with that person. So um, I'd say morale is strong despite, despite that, but um, I would agree with your assessment that police work has changed considerably, um, especially with COVID. And I don't know if Art has anything to add because he's interacting with patrol officers daily. Uh, Chief, it, 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 the, it hit the nail right on the head. Um, COVID, no COVID, uh, we're going to protect the good citizens of San Mateo. And, and if uh, someone's violating uh, uh, the law, we're going we're gonna to make the, we're going to make arrests. And if um, they're going to, as, as it was said, catch and release, um, again, that's, that's not our concern. Uh, we're going to go out there, we're going to enforce the law, we're going to protect the citizens and, and the businesses of, of San Mateo. That's what we do. And morale is good. Well, well my, again, my concern is with repeat offenders, other than politely asking them to show up in court, is there any recourse that you have to keep them out of here? You know, I, I guess you can't lock them up anymore, but I, I don't want the same people doing the same crimes in the same neighborhood over and over and over again. It's just, it's not acceptable. Yeah, no, I absolutely, and I, I feel your pain. Uh, we feel it too, but uh, we'll arrest them every day if we have to. Hopefully, uh, when we get past this COVID thing, they'll be held, held accountable for their actions. You know, um, I, did, I can add to that. Um, we can't do it alone. And through uh, Neighborhood Watch, you know, what, you guys are the eyes and ears of your community. You know, package thefts, if you see someone suspicious, that's a call to the police department. Um, we encourage you to call because we're not always there. You know the suspicious people that belong or that don't belong in your neighborhood and you know the people that do. Um, so organize, um, allow us to help. We can come out and do presentations, safety presentations. We can um, look at your houses and give you tips on uh, maybe uh, where to place video cameras. Um, we can educate your area. and. Uh, educated community is going to protect itself and it's going to be a partner with us. It's going to allow us to get there and it's going to provide us with good actionable information where we can make those arrests. And I think if we make it uncomfortable for the criminal, we respond there quickly. They know that, hey, if I go into this neighborhood, someone's going to call on me. Um, you know, I always get in trouble in this neighborhood. I'm not going to go there. Um, cities have that reputation too. You know, um, People know that they can go to San Francisco and you can go on a crime spree and not be punished. Um, different counties, this is a different county. We do hold people accountable, but we're also um, kind of tied by the legislature that uh, reduces some of these penalties and ties our hands as far as bringing people to uh, county jail. So um, I would encourage everybody on this, you know, the fact that you're on this, you're concerned and you're leaders in your community, don't let the momentum stop right now. Make sure um, that you get, uh, you know, um, the PIO information or uh, uh, Janine Luna, she uh, works with Neighborhood Watch. Um, we can help you organize and I would encourage that. It's a, it's a huge deal. Thanks for what you do. Great, thank you for the, for the question, Mr. Greenlee. Uh, Jeff, uh, uh, Jeff F, if you can unmute. And uh, Kathy, I see you waving. If you can just click the raise your hand feature, uh, otherwise I can get to you. D Dominique, you're gonna be next. Thank you for your patience. Uh, Jeff F. Yes, hello. Hi. Thank you, uh, San Mateo Police Department for, uh, for um, aiding in the community. So my question for Lieutenant Mefford or L Lieutenant Sanchez with regards to the shooting at the Wells Fargo um, at first blush to the layman, it appears to be, as you say, targeted um, and per, per perhaps gang related. Um, is there any suspicion? And again, I understand the sensitivities of the investigation, but is there any 
suspicion that, that the shooter is from the Hillsdale Garden Apartments, being that the victim uh, just moved there, as you say, three to four months ago. Um, yeah, I can answer that. I know for certain that the shooter is not from the Hillsdale Garden Apartments. For okay. certain. Okay, well, that's some good news. Anything else you can shed? Uh, I mean, the, 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 the report only said that the shooter ran away. I mean, what, what can you... And so, the, I mean, that, honestly, that's part of the limited information that we can provide. If we had more information and we put it out, specifics, um, that would let the bad guy know uh, what we know. And then they can take countermeasures. I don't, you remember the Night Stalker, um, you know, Richard Ramirez, uh, um, Mayor Feinstein at the time was briefed on some of the internal information, the clues that the police were really looking for, were yeah. really tied the Night Stalker to the scenes, and it was a pair of sneakers. When she went on, on the news and said, hey, uh, you know, we're looking for a particular set of speakers. He went to the Golden Gate Bridge and tossed them off. And so that's kind of the reason that um, you have limited information. I'll also tell you that if there was truly a threat to the public um, where we had a random guy going around shooting um, and we needed to get that information out to you, we absolutely would. You know, public safety is number one. And then if we can, if we can catch the criminal afterwards, that's great. But the information, the investigative information that's going to allow us to make an arrest and bring this person to justice needs to be held close to the vest because those are our cards. And that's how we, that's how we kind of tie them to crimes. Um, that answers your question? Yes, it does. And I appreciate your, well, the transparency that you can reveal. And I appreciate what you guys do. Thank you. Mike, you're muted. Great. It's a mistake I'll probably always make. Dominique, if uh, you can unmute yourself. And yes, thank hello. You, thank you for your patience. Well, you're welcome. And thank you very much for this meeting, which is very enlightening. And thank you very much for your work. Um, what I would like to say is I've also been living on Louise Lane for about 20 years. And really, in the past few months, what we are very concerned about is the, the little section between um, Louise Lane and Hacienda, right at where the library is, is becoming very dangerous just to come and get out of our street. And um, I don't know if that's something I don't want to have to your to add to your uh, load of work, but if you can, when you patrol, if you can give some tickets or at least some warnings to some of the trucks who are parking in a way that they totally block the, um, they park on the corner. And I wonder if we could uh, get the corners to be painted red, not that I really want then the overflow of cars to come down the street, but it's, it's really becoming unsafe. And I'm kind of waiting for the day where there is gonna be an injury accident happening because people are driving, some of the trucks are driving way too fast and there is not enough space for four cars on that little section. Do Dominique, where's the, where's, where's the intersection you're speaking? So it's um, it's um, Louise, I, li I live on Louise Lane on what I call Upper Louise Lane. So mm -hmm. the, so I go down my street and I, I turn right to go to the library. So I turn right on Hacienda and Hacienda. then I arrive at Hillsdale. So that little section here. And the cars, are, the cars are parking all the way up to the intersection. So when you pull up, you can't see around? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Okay. And yeah, it, it's happening yeah. very many times. I could have, I'll, I'll definitely, one of our biggest issues in the city of San Mateo is traffic related um, you know, complaints. Uh, I'll get this to our traffic bureau. Um, and then I could uh, contact Public Works and have them take a look because they're the ones in charge of the red zones and have you. They could take a look at it and see if that's if 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 that's needed. Okay, yeah. and, That'd and be really they, helpful they, because you have <clears throat> big SUVs park on the corner there, but they also park up on the sidewalk. Um, so then, if you have a, a lower car, you you know you basically can't see past them. Yeah. And then the I'll, I'll go I'll go out there tomorrow and take a look oh. in the sunlight so I can take a, take a good look at it. Yeah, sometimes you have cars parked halfway in the street and on the sidewalk, and then you have two cars trying to go by, and at one point there is going to be an accident. It's it's really pending. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. This is very helpful. Like Lieutenant Meffert said, you are our eyes and ears. So we really value this kind of feedback. So thank you. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Kathy Levezo, uh, were you waving your hand um, earlier? If you can unmute. I was, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Great, thanks so much for this meeting. It's really helpful. Um, I've been a resident of San Mateo for over 40 years in Briar Lane for 26. And I really was kind of naive to what was going on over at the apartments. I walk a lot and probably, I think it was probably late, late summer, early fall, I was walking across the street at Alameda and Hillsdale and um, a car did a donut at 6.30 at night, scared the heck out of me. And I hear sometimes these donuts happening and I see the skid marks. And I was just wondering if you could maybe talk to that point. And then also I've also noticed um, kind of an uptick in homelessness in the area. And I'm wondering if you might be able to talk to that also. Yeah, Kathy, as, as far as the, the traffic related complaints, what helps us out tremendously is if, you, if you're seeing or hearing the activity at a certain time of the day or night and on certain days. Um, so we could get our traffic officers and we could get our officers out there uh, in the area to, to, try to try to catch the violators. So if it's, if it's something that's usually happening, like you said, at 6.30 in the evening, um, and it's, it's usually happening on, on Friday and Saturday nights, let us know. I mean, that information is good because then we could set officers up and, and try to catch the violators. As far as the homelessness, where, where is that occurring at? Uh, we do have a homeless outreach team and we can get some resources out there. We just need to know where they're at. Yeah, I, I, I've just been seeing an uptick um, kind of, more, like I said, I walk a lot kind of around a hospital area. I don't know if they're there, like released from San Mateo Medical Center and don't have any place to go. But if, if I see something like that, you know, they're not really bothering anyone, but their welfare, they don't look healthy and their welfare, I, I'm concerned about that. Um, so is that something that you would, that I would call the police about or what? Yeah, what's you can't. If you, if, if, you, if you feel like they're, they're in need of assistance, you can give us a call for a welfare check. We can, we can have an officer go out there and, and take a look. Uh, we do have the county hospital right there. Uh, so yeah, uh, you know, we, they, they receive patients from all throughout the county. And when they're released, they are released you know, um, from the hospital. So sometimes you do have that, but if, especially if you're seeing the encampments or if you're seeing homeless individuals uh, camped out, sometimes they camp out, you know, at night and, you know, uh, under an awning in front of a business. If we're missing that, give us a call and let us know. Will do. Thank you again. Um, this is very informative. Appreciate your time and effort. Our pleasure. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, Jana, thanks so much for your patience. Uh, if you can please unmute. And then uh, Tanner, I see you just uh, wave, wave your hand. If you could just select the raise hand feature, I'll, I'll get you in the queue. Thank you, Jana. Thank you all, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and thank you, I also live on, on Louise and you were gracious enough to come out the other night. We had a unidentified car idling in front of our house for over 45 minutes. So thank you for coming out and um, asking them for their ID and checking to make sure that there wasn't anything shady going on. I just had a couple of questions. I wanted to know one, what's your biggest concern about the Hilldale Garden Complex, just from your point of view of being a police officer? What, I guess, what are you most concerned about? And then secondly, how does the Hillsdale Garden compare to other um, condominium or apartment complexes in the area as far as parking problems, crime, and um, just other nuance? nuisances. Uh, Jana, yeah. So, I mean, what I care about, I just care about everyone's safety and I care about everyone's welfare. Uh, so, so when you speak on that, uh, that's, that, that's my concern. Uh, as an area lieutenant, I also care about the quality of life issues. And it's the stuff that we're talking about here today, other than the homicide. Um, and, and, and that's what I do. And that's what I'm here for. Um, your second question was, how does it compare? Uh, I'm the area two lieutenant. And Polly Hillsville Garden Apartment is the only one I could really think of where it's purely rentals. 
I know that Station Green has been brought up as like a comparison, but that's not an apples to apples co comparison. The only other area of town I could think is maybe the Los Prados, La Selva area, uh, with all the apartments and condos there. Um, I drive through. I drive through that area and I see the same type of parking issues. I'm not that area lieutenant though, so I, I'm not sure. But uh, from my understanding, it, they receive similar sim similar issues and similar complaints. Okay, thank you. So yeah, um, and just to wrap that up, you're saying that because the Hillsdale Garden is 100% rental and there's no homeowners, that's typically is an indicator that there's going to be higher instances. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's the only property that large in my area. Okay. So I don't have another cons uh, comparison for you. Understood. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, okay. I'm just trying to figure out what were kind of like the leading indicators and you're saying that it's more size as opposed to they're not being homeowners in there. That's it. Thanks, Thank Jenna, you. for your question. Appreciate it. Uh, C-U-A-U. Uh, thanks for your patience. If you can, please unmute. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you. Thank you to the police department for uh, your, uh, protecting the community. Uh, we are thankful, thankful for you guys and, and appreciate it. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is related to uh, to the cameras. Uh, I think that there was a previous question about cameras, but I don't know if it was focused on the apartments. But I want to ask about cameras on the shopping mall. A couple of years ago, uh, there was uh, I was uh, uh, in the uh, train station in the morning, and then there was a guy that was drunk or was homeless, I don't know, but went and punched me in the face <laughs> for no reason with my mom. Uh, and and then I uh, the police came. I, I did a police report, but I went to the the shopping mall. And I, and I asked for a, a security video and they didn't have. So uh, I'm surprised that uh, such large uh, shopping mall doesn't, doesn't have that. Uh, so that's my question, how, how you guys can enforce the shopping mall to have more cameras everywhere. And my second point is about, there is a little bridge between the, in, in the creek between the the, the Hills Apartments and the shopping mall, where is the 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 the, the burger? Um, what's the name of the burger? Um, counter. The counter, the counter burger. Uh, so in that little area, there is a small bridge, and I used to walk by there when coming back from work. Uh, but lately, is there was there is a lot of people smoking, and, and and it's it's not. I don't feel safe walking there. A smoking pot, uh, and yeah, and uh, yeah. So those are my, my two two things. How to increase the security uh, with cameras in the shopping mall, and what can we do about more security on that area between the the apartments and the shopping mall where this that little bridge. Thank you. Yes, I. The, the Hillsdale Mall is also part of my area, area too. And uh, we have talked to the Hillsdale Mall about getting cameras. That's been a discussion we've had with them for the last few years. It'd be great if they could. Uh, we, we highly encourage them to do it. Uh, unfortunately, we can't make them do it. Um, the Hillsdale Mall, uh, in, the way of, in the way of crimes that occur there, it's kind of lower than some of the other ones in the area. Uh, so that, that's what they kind of... They, they kind of fall back on. Uh, the bridge has always been, a, been an area, uh, an area for uh, uh, a hot spot for us is, is, is what we call it. So uh, I, could, I could notify our officers, you talk about the little bridge that goes, goes from the, like you said, the counter and it goes over to the PetSmart or the Petco that's right there. Th that is an area I have our, I'll have our officers uh, step up patrols in that area and I'll uh, talk to the uh, Hillsdale Security Mall and have them do the same. Thank you. All right, thank you for the question. Uh, Jen K, I see you next. If you can please unmute Jen K. All right, let's move 
on to Tanner. Jen, uh, if you log back on, I will try and get your question. Tanner, go ahead. Um, I just wanted to build on the question that the resident had um, where the recommendation was to, uh, in, in regard to Essex uh, upping their security so that we weren't having to pay police uh, to kind of do that job for them. Um, so I know that there's a number of people on Louise and um, on the other side of Hillsdale, uh, people that have contacted Bearsford Hillsdale Neighborhood Association. So I do recommend contacting us again and or coming together and doing, uh, as was recommended tonight, a letter to Essex together where you're signing with a, a number of people and then possibly also repeating that to your city council to have council support you in that effort. Um, I just wanted to pass along to Art, uh, Art for your uh, patrols, um, right on the corner of Louise and Edison. Uh, a couple of months ago, I witnessed a, a drug deal there. And then even as uh, like Kathy Levezo, you know, I'm a, I'm a dog walker, so I get out and see a lot. Um, and even as recently as two days ago, saw some really suspicious activity. They seem to walk from the garden apartments right there on Edison northbound. And they're really just right there uh, between about four and five o'clock. Uh, and right there at those homes, that corner of Louise and Edison. So I just wanted to kind of throw that information out there. That seems to be kind of a little hot spot because it's quieter and not as visible. Thanks, Lisa. Let's uh, let's maybe talk offline a little bit because I'm going to need maybe some descriptions and stuff like that. And I'm going to sure. encourage you and everyone to call us when it's happening. Right? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tanner. Uh, John Epperson. Oh, thank you. Um, I was wondering if the police department has ever considered approaching the city attorney's office regarding uh, a potential public nuisance action against. Essex. I, I appreciate the work that you guys are doing and particularly what Lieutenant Art is doing there kind of at the ground level, if you will, with the, the property manager and such, but they are a big company. Um, they certainly would not want to be sued over conditions here. It seems like it's been something that it didn't, didn't just happen. And I, I would think that your jobs would be a lot easier if they suddenly decided that somebody from far, far farther up the, the food chain came in and said, fix it. You know, we need security, we need cameras, you know, what do we need to do here? And I'm just wondering, I mean, realize you probably can't answer that question, but it's it's a suggestion or just wondering if it's something you've actually considered to, to bring a little heat to the to the subject. Yeah, I, I guess I'm the likely person to address that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I have actually in other in other jurisdictions, I've been involved in, in those uh, nuisance efforts um, and they're difficult, but they're doable. And I think it's a great idea. Um, to this point, we've uh, we've reached out to the the to Essex in, in an effort to work collaboratively, and I think Art's done a really good job at the management level. And as we mentioned before, we have to we have to elevate that relationship to higher in the organization. And um, I think if we don't gain the traction that we need, um, I think that you know all options are on the table, and that's definitely um, you know we, my feeling is 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 we'd like to. Um, you know, receive their cooperation, um, you know, voluntarily initially, but if that's not going to work, we're, we're, we're obviously not going to stand for um, an ongoing problem or, or, or uh, tolerate um, an ongoing nuisance. So um, I would say from the city's perspective, I, I'm confident that, that all options would be considered moving forward. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you for the question. Kristen? I'm sorry to come back around, but I think to hit John's point, um, I don't know if you know this, but Ex Essex is uh, is headquartered right a, like right next to your police station. Um, when I was working to get the dumpster moved, um, I did go to the regional, but I think you guys should be working at a higher level than that even. But just to let you know, it is a local company. So I think there would be a vested interest if like there was a newspaper article, that would be a negative for them. So I think that I think that, you know, John had a really good point. We should be working probably at a, a higher level, even though I found Norma to be the last, um, she was one of the better managers. I think it, we're at the wrong level for the, the level of, you know, clientele that they've allowed to go in and the problems that that comes with it. I think Angie on the beginning, she lives right at Edison and Louise. I mean, I think they spend most of their mornings on the weekend cleaning up broken bottles 
and food wrappers. And I know we do when people park in your area, it's not just the, you know, car that you're dealing with and not being able to park in front of your own house. You have to pick up a, a smashed 40 or you have to pick up the food that they decided to dump out of their house. So it makes it very tumultuous in the relationship. And I think it's, in my opinion, even at the fact that they don't have a stall for every person that they rent to for an apartment, not even one for like 38 people, 38 apartments, that's an issue at a higher level where the city council, I think, needs to be involved to make it, you know, a requirement that they provide the proper, you know, parking and, and they rent to the proper people. Anyways, food for thought. I just wanted to share that. That's great. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, I don't see anyone else with their hands raised. Uh, uh, if you, uh, uh, there you are, Barbara. Yeah, hi. Hi. Thank, thank you for doing this. This is so helpful. Just, you know, speaking of garbage, I, I live on Edison and around 39th Avenue. The amount of garbage that I have to pick up every day is just insane. I once called, I think, um, the garbage people, and I said, don't we have any street cleaning? Because we talked to the hospital, and the hospital said they put garbage cans outside, and that's as much as they can do. But the, the garbage accumulates on the street. It looks really bad. So I was wondering, what else can we do? Lieutenant Sanchez. Yeah, for, for Barbara and, and Kristen, I, I have talked, I think in our October meeting, we discussed the trash and that you guys are picking up their trash from their tenants um, that's overflowing in, in, into the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, I've talked to them about it. I think there was a, there was a su suggestion made uh, by one of the community members is, hey, listen, they have people on the complex, on the property picking up, and I know they do, uh, but they need to come out. If they could come out a block in either direction of the surrounding um, neighborhoods and, and pick up, so you, so you guys don't have to pick up their trash, um, I think uh, I think that's a good suggestion. I'm going to bring up to them again, and you know I, I definitely got the the Louise Lane, and now the uh, the 39th and Edison, and um, maybe putting trash cans out there is uh, will help out with that endeavor. Uh, but it's something I'll bring up to them. Thank you. Yvonne, see you next. Yes, thank you again for having this. Uh, earlier you uh, talked about the gangs that were moving into the Hillsdale Garden Apartments that you identified that some of them were there. Um, what have you done to uh, deal with that issue? at Hillsdale and then in general in San Mateo. Yeah, Yvonne, um, at the Hillsdale Garden Apartments, we, we arrested them and uh, in the Hillsdale Garden Apartments uh, had them evicted. So di displaced them. I'm not sure where they went, but they're not on that property any longer. Uh, we have a crime reduction unit, uh, our, our crew team. Uh, they're well-versed in uh, gang enforcement, human trafficking, uh, identification and, and detection and also narcotics. Uh, they're our go-to team that deals with, with those three issues. So whenever there's a gang issue, uh, they're, 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 the point, uh, they're the point people uh, who conduct investigations and then we in patrol uh, assist with them. So uh, we, we just try to um, uh, do what we can to uh, keep them um, off the streets and arrest them when they're doing wrong. So that is something that you can arrest and you don't uh, release again. And was the it, homicide? It, no, it depends on the crime again. So there's a lot of crimes, you know, that, that, that we could, we just, we cite out um, on site or we bring them back to the police department and, and cite them out. Um, it, it's, it's a little difficult to get people into county jail because of the whole COVID thing. Okay. And was that homicide uh, on Saturday morning, was that? partly gang related at all? Um, we're still looking into the motive. Um, sometimes there are gangs related to these rap groups. Um, that's true. 
I do not know if this particular um, that was gang related or if it was, uh, you know, narcotic related or, or you know, a, a jealousy type uh, family issue. Uh, we do not know that yet. I suspect we should know soon um, as we investigate. Um, but um, we do have some gangs in San Mateo. We've had them for years and your uh, crew team specializes in identifying them and um, holding them accountable. We prosecute them for special gang crimes just because they are gang members. Uh, if they commit another crime in the furtherance of their gang, if, you know, if they help me say, you know, Norte, uh, that's an additional crime. And we're really aggressive on that because it's a big enhancement. It's a big hammer for them. So, um, uh, the, the current murder, um, I can't say that it's gang related at this point. Thank you. Great. Thank you for your questions. Anyone else have a question or comment? I don't see any hands raised right now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Blake. Hello, everyone. I'd like to introduce myself uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I'm the chief operating officer for the San Mateo Medical Center, and I have been in this position now going on about uh, 14 months um, and have appreciated every comment that has come to me directly uh, here at the hospital uh, to assist um, with all of the things that have been uh, talked about. So I want to talk about a couple of things that are happening at the hospital, just to, to say this, I don't mean to call up the meeting, please forgive me, uh, San Mateo uh, Police Department, uh, but to talk about our partnership with the San Mateo Police Department, we have a, a very uh, tight relationship and very much appreciate the work that we do together to help with incidents that occur on the campus of the hospital. And I have found that San Mateo PD is uh, very uh, responsive and helps us uh, whenever we uh, a call. Uh, with respect to individuals that are discharged from the hospital uh, where there may be concerns or issues associated with that, we have the capacity to be able to get them to their home through a couple of different means. And so um, while we do our best uh, effort to make sure that that occurs, uh, I would also want to make myself available to anybody in the neighborhood that would want to talk about something that they have witnessed or observed on the campus. Multiple times uh, I've had uh, reflections on the, uh, the uh, garbage or refuse or you know, parking issues or any number of things. And, um, and we respond to each one of those things as they happen. To let you know what we're doing right now, uh, two, we have our uh, landscaping company um, manage the parking lots and the um, street side uh, contiguous to the hospital at least on a weekly basis and if things collect more often than that they come out more often and uh, and then to beg everyone's indulgence for at least the next year and a half to two years while we you know complete the the building I know that that's been quite an annoyance for everyone but we will see a a vastly improved campus with much more parking on site uh, so that we can get cars off of the streets. And that that is, um, while it may seem a long way away that we will work very hard to make that happen. But I also wanna address the group uh, to say that I'm also a, um, a tenant at um, the Hillsdale Garden Apartments myself. And uh, one of the things that I have asked uh, uh, Hillsdale Gardens, just as an FYI, is that they recently removed the uh, waste cans that were available on campus for some reason that uh, can't be explained. And so I have approached them about returning them. And I think we have seen an uptick in uh, refuse as a result of those uh, leaving. And the reason that I'm a tenant there, a couple of reasons, it's across the street from the hospital, but I live in Southern California and I work here Monday through Friday. Uh, and uh, here several weekends out of the month um, to, uh, to work here. So again, just wanna make myself uh, known to uh, the community that I'm a part of uh, the community uh, by being a tenant at the apartment complex and um, that we are uh, committed to working with uh, the community
community to resolve issues uh, of mutual interest uh, whenever possible. Thank you. Hey, Robert, I know we met before, uh, but next year I'm taking over as the liaison for the hospital from uh, oh, very good. Matt in Earnshaw. So looking forward to working with you. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Oh, we were very fortunate for that. Uh, one, okay. Uh, Barbara? Yeah, I just want to ask Robert, how can we get in touch with him? So um, my, if, if I was writing, I, how, how to do, is there a chat or something on here that I could? We don't have a chat available. Okay. Um, the main number to the hospital, and I'm well known, Robert Blake. Um, if you're of a certain age, you know an actor by that name. So uh, maybe that will be a, a clip for you to remember that uh, by. But I'm the chief operations officer. I'm a nurse by background. Um, and so a direct call. Um, there are messages that can be left on my phone. Um, and that number, if you want it, is 650-537-2, uh, I don't dial it very often, uh, 2542. So 650-573-2542, or you can call the main number to the hospital and ask for me directly, and, and it, they'll send you to my phone. Great. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Can you hear yeah. me now? This is Jen. Again. Hi, Jen. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, greatly appreciate this um, session. Just curious, as we invest in cameras as homeowners, and I'm less concerned about the porch pirates, I'm more concerned about having a piece of a puzzle to help the police force for a greater crime. Are there types of cameras that you prefer or recommend? If there's a quite a, an array out there, you know, things to consider. I want one that will record in the night, clearly, because a lot of things happen then. So any thoughts on that would be appreciated. Yeah, uh, we, we won't give a specific brand name, but you're on the right track. Something that uh, that's going to record at night, something that has high enough resolution uh, that could maybe, you know, it's going to identify, we'll, we'll be able to identify someone's face or maybe even a, um, uh, a license plate number. Uh, and then some way to retrieve it to provide it to us. And then also, let's all remember the Nest program. Uh, those of you who already have surveillance cameras at your house, uh, you go to the police department web, web page, go to the Nest program, you can register your camera with us to do what Jen is exactly talking about, just to be a piece of the puzzle to assist us in solving crimes. And you can register your cameras there and then we know it's there. And if something happens in the area, uh, we could go to you and uh, request uh, to take a look at your video. For us. Thank you. Adding to that, uh, the NEST program that we, we have here in the city of San Mateo, it's it's not related to the NEST cameras that are out there. I believe it stands for Neighborhood Eyes Security, Security Team. I, didn't, I think we created it before NEST, NEST came out. Uh, at least I'm, I'm going to stick to that for now. <laughs> but, uh, uh, having a, your camera be 4K HD or better uh, will help us at least see license plates. And what, we, what we're finding when we do our canvases, uh, or if we use the Nest program to go to a house because they've identified themselves to have a security camera, what we found is that street facing cameras, in addition to cameras that are facing your house are extremely helpful because that helps us know which direction the suspects came in, which way they left, if they were in a car, uh, and if there were any other su uh, suspects with them too. So, you know, when you do install your security uh, your video security system, uh, please ensure that you do have some that are facing uh, both directions uh, on your street. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, uh, when you go onto our webpage, uh, samateopolice.org, and you're perusing it, go into our neighborhood watch section and reach out to us. We'll come out if your neighborhood watch isn't active at the moment. We will come out to your neighborhood. We'll meet with your block captain and we'll, uh, we'll do a presentation, whether it's in Zoom or in person, uh, and um, we can talk more about uh, what Lieutenant Mefford was talking about is crime prevention through envi environmental design. We have 
uh, practitioners who are certified uh, in the nation to uh, to teach SEPTED, and we'll come out to your house and and actually provide that information. We'll do that uh, during a neighborhood watch meeting. Any other questions or feedback? All right, this is uh, not the last meeting we'll have. Uh, we'll have more of these meetings. Um, I know that we have you know, uh, more of these meetings scheduled in the future. In 2021, we'll have more listening sessions. We'll be able to cover more topics. Uh, so just know that we're here. Um, you can always email us at pdpio at cityofsanmateo.org. But our website, as, as I was mentioning earlier, sanmateopolice.org is phenomenal if you wanna learn more about our policies and training, neighborhood watch uh, to register your security cameras and uh, to learn about our emergency alerts because when there's an emergency, we'll send you information through Nixol and Nextdoor. Uh, Mike, can I do my last little area lieutenant thing? Please, that'd be just, great. I'd love to hear closing please, statements from all three of you. Yeah, just follow us. If you want to know what's going on at the San Mateo Police Department and you, and, and you want up-to-date information, these are the links to follow us. Uh, you got Twitter, Nextdoor, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Nixel, uh, whatever social media outlet you, you prefer, or follow us on, on all of them. Uh, once, once again, uh, my name is Art Sanchez. I'm your Area 2 Lieutenant, uh, and I'm here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant Sanchez. And his contact information is, is under the tab, area lieutenants on our website. There's a whole page dedicated to your area lieutenants. You can look at the map of wh what they're assigned, the area they're assigned in their email and phone number. Lieutenant Mefford, closing remarks. Um, no, you know what? Um, I am glad that we're having this because uh, your engagement is uh, super important. Um, like I said, you guys are the eyes and ears. Um, do what you can to protect yourselves as far as uh, coming together and reporting stuff to the police department. And um, I just want to let you know that you're, uh, you have very talented police officers here and um, you're the detectives that are working, you know, around the clock on these serious cases are uh, amazing, you know, and I, hope at some point um, I can share everything that they've done, but it's it's quite amazing what they're able to do, and um, you should feel uh, very safe knowing that uh, you have such quality uh, investigators in this city. Thank you very much, Lieutenant. And I'm Chief Barberini. Yes, I had your partner in here talking to me. Um, no, uh, I'd just like to echo what, um, first of all, thank you everybody for attending. I'd like to echo what Lieutenant Mefford just said. We're very fortunate to live and work in a very safe city. And, and San Mateo is a great place. And uh, it's only because of the real relationship we have and the people that live here that, that uh, make it great. Um, your partner, Janine, just ran in um, and asked me to remind folks um, that we are starting up a community academy um, that we've uh, we've received a, a lot of interest in and and we're trying to get through COVID to initiate that in the spring. Um, so that uh, that information can be found on our webpage. You can learn a, a heck of a lot more about the police department and what we do and what we're all about. And we kind of open up, open up the doors and uh, and and let you let you see everything. So if you're interested in doing something like that, um, that would be great. So we have what do we have? We had at one point we had 80 or 90 people on this call and and um, and it's. You know, it's getting to be Christmas Eve pretty soon, and that level of interest at this time of year is incredibly encouraging to all of us. And uh, we, I can't tell you how much we appreciate your support and how much we value the relationship with uh, with the entire community, but especially close knit ones that that are aware and care and and have the uh, the interest and enthusiasm that you've all shown. So, thank you very much. Um, as I mentioned before, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy and Safe New Year. Um, Please call us. Uh, please let us know what's going on. Uh, we can't do this alone. Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You Thanks for doing such a great job. Thank you very much. Everyone have a good night. Thanks Thank for your you. support. Thank, Thank you. you.